Hey, hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Bob Hope. I'm here to help celebrate Bob Crosby's 50th anniversary of being in the music business. Crosby Music presents the Bob Crosby Golden Anniversary Tribute, starring Bob Crosby in the orchestra, with special guests Bob Hope, Gloria DeHaven, Kay Starr, and featuring the talents of Judy Garland, Louis Armstrong, and Jack Benny. Stay tuned, we'll be back with the happiest musical tribute of the year. San Diego's beautiful Balboa Park is the setting for this golden anniversary concert. Bob Crosby and his orchestra celebrate 50 years of big band musical memories, which began back in July of 1935. For this special occasion, Bob has assembled a 15-piece band of jazz legends, the very legends who joined him in creating his happy sound 50 years ago. Enjoy celebrating the unforgettable music of the golden age of swing with Bob Crosby, his orchestra, and the world-famous Bobcat. Thank you. Have the Bobcats out here. That's Yank Lawson there on the right. Bobby Haggard on bass up there. Alvin Stoller on the drums, our pianist. Mr. Ray Sherman, Eddie Miller, the great tenor player, Bob Havens on trombone, and of course, Peanuts, and Billy Butterfield. Let's play That's a Plenty, huh?
what would you like to have us play now? Mr. Crosby, would you please play the Pagan Love Song? Sure, we'd like to play that. Fellas, the Pagan Love Song. This number is sort of a musical holiday. We feature the individual efforts of several of the boys in the band. First, there's John Lawson on a trumpet solo, and then Eddie Miller in a tenor saxophone solo, and the keeper of the doghouse, Bobby Haggard, slapping the big bass fiddle, and then Ray Baduke in a drum solo, and watch him go. By the time this Paramount short was made in December of 1937, Bob and the band had made the big time and were among the top 10 musical attractions in America. They had made big business out of Dixieland-style jazz, orchestrated and performed by a big band as Dixieland Swing. No other orchestra before or since has duplicated the feat of making joyous traditional jazz improvisation sparkle and swing in a big band format. Remember the wonderful record that we made on Mead Lux Lewis's tune called Honky Tonk Train Blues? <laughs> Ray Sherman. 1932 was the year it all started for Bob. He began his career as a singer with the Anson Weeks Orchestra, but was soon tapped by the Dorsey Brothers as the first male vocalist with their band. And then in 1935, Bob was asked to lead a newly formed orchestra dedicated to a musical hybrid called Dixieland Swing. Bob's charm and personable song style brought warmth and sophistication to the band. Backing him on the stand was a truly impressive roster of musicians, composers, and arrangers. In fact, so highly regarded was this group that in the 1939 All-Star Swing Band, four out of eight musicians were Crosby Bobcats. These are some of the sidemen that created this unique sound. Yank Lawson, Billy Butterfield, Eddie Miller, Irving Fazola, Charlie Spivak, Jess Stacy, Ray Baduke, and Bobby Haggard. Every one a bona fide candidate for the Big Band Hall of Fame. Hats off to the Bobcats.
the wonderful thing about uh, Bob Crosby is that he is he can be a part of anything. He's very amiable. He tells these wonderful stories. He's very bright. He has a marvelous sense of humor. And he can tell stories from now on. Well, if I remember correctly, George at that time was writing Porgy and Bess, the music for Porgy and Bess. And I guess he wanted to hear one band that could play Dixieland and play the blues. And he came into the Silver Grill Lexington Hotel. The uh, ballroom was called the Silver Grill. And he listened to our band uh, frequently. And one night, he found out that after work, we rehearsed. So he asked me if he could play some of the music he was writing for Porgy and Bess. He'd like to see the reaction of how, what I thought and what the guys in the band thought. And he played some of the numbers that he was writing for Porgy and Bess. And one particular number just, just intrigued us. The construction, it was the blues, but it was a lullaby. And he said he was going to call it lullaby. And then we got nerve enough to say, well, Mr. Gershwin, could we possibly have the rights to use that number as a theme song? And he said yes. And through ASCAP, he sent us a letter giving us permission, even during the Warner Brothers uh, ASCAP strike, to play lullaby on the radio and use as our theme. And that song later, when he got the lyric writer to write the lyrics, instead of lullaby, was called Summertime, when the living is easy. <laughs> I'd like to pay tribute to George Gershwin, a wonderful arrangement by Bobby Haggard. Now, this really is not a jazz number. This is a number, I think, that you can listen to and really appreciate the way Bobby arranged it and the song itself. Here's George Gershwin's Bess, Oh, Where Is My Bess?
We were very privileged in having some great arrangers in the band. I can remember when Paul Wesson joined the band. Henry Mancini played a few times with us and did some arranging for the band. Dean Kincaid, Bobby Haggard, of course, and Matty Matlock, Ray Conniff. Be shortly after that, but it was it was a very thrilling experience. The first night I played with the band. Uh, because it's it's strange, but in the bands, uh, I suppose it's the same today with the, with the kids that are coming up. But each band in those days had its own personality. I mean, I'm not talking about the people in the band. I'm talking about the way the band played and the sound of the band. And the Crosby Band definitely had a different personality than any other band at that time. And I think it was. Uh, a lot of it was responsible to the rhythm feel of the band, which uh, Ray Paduke was uh, laying down, and Bob Haggard. It was a matter of musicians having an opportunity to play what they liked. Now, when you like something, you put your heart and soul in it. Those of us who liked that style played that style. And when you got in there, you played with your heart and soul because you looked forward to going to work to express yourself and to play an instrument like you speak. You speak the things you love, with an instrument you express yourself in the same love. Now I've got to have John Best do a solo. All right. yeah. One of the great tr trumpet players of all time. Hey, I got to tell a story about John. John uh, <laughs> loves to have a little touch now and then. We were doing one-nighters through Iowa. We stopped at the Holiday Inn at 5 in the afternoon. We got out of the bus and we looked at the sign. It says, happy hour, all you can drink from 5 to 7 for a dollar. I walked in with John. He walked right up to the bar. He says, give me $2 worth. <laughs> yeah, Billy was second. <laughs> This is John doing a song that my brother made a big record on many years ago, and I love the song, and I hope you do, and the way John plays it, you'll hear some real trumpet. This is called Wrap Your Troubles and Dreams and Dream Your Troubles Away.
He's a tiger, isn't he? John Best. Beautiful, John. God love you. And here's the Bobcats treatment of now Billy May's arrangement jazz. of High Society. Here we go. Welcome back to more of the Bob Crosby Golden Anniversary Tribute. I'm going to sit right down, write myself a letter. I'm going to make believe that it came from you. I'm going to write words oh so sweet. They're gonna knock me off of my feet A lot of kisses on the bottom 
I'll be glad I got him. I'm gonna smile and say, I hope you're feeling better. Gonna close with love the way that I do. A boo -boo -boo -boo. Sit right down, write myself a letter. Gonna make believe it came from you, Bobcats. Say, hope you're feeling better. Close with love the way you do. I'm gonna sit right down and write myself a letter. Gonna make believe it came. I'm gonna make believe it came. I'm gonna make believe it came from you. Thank you. One thing about the concert, Yank Lawson and Billy Butterfield did what I always call, well, talking music. They were really, they were on. And I don't think I've ever heard anything quite as thrilling as those two great trumpet players, Billy Butterfield and Yank Lawson, talking to one another saying things that I'm sure they'd never put down on paper. <laughs>
But here's what I call a real jazz dance time old tune. It's called Panama. And we also are very privileged in helping to start some young girl singers. 
Doris Day started with our band. Kay Starr started with our band. And Glory to Haven. Sure enough, about a week or 10 days later, I was called and asked if I wanted the job. And I was so excited about it. And my mother immediately said, I don't know about this, all those men, and said, I'm going with you. So every night, she came with me. And I was working in a place, the Trianon uh, Ballroom, where they serve liquor. And I was underage. So I was, of course, not allowed, really legally, to be singing there. So I said I was 21. I really, I don't know if I looked 21, but I said I was 21. But the greatest part of the story was that every time the police would come and they'd check the place out, um, I'd be in the middle of a song, singing my heart out. I remember one of them was, I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your... And I'd get as far as not even heart, and I'd get the high sign from either Eddie Miller or Yank Lawson or Chess Stacy at the piano or one of them or Bob. And I'd get this signal to, you know, and no matter where I was, I'd quickly leave the stage and go into the ladies' room and waited until the police left. Then I could come out and finish my song. So I spent an awful lot of time in the John singing for him. But um, <laughs> other than that, it was a wonderful experience. It really was. They were as happy as they were when they played the music. And I, I remember being thrilled when I would hear uh, the big noise from Winnetka and, and hear all of those wonderful things like that because it, to me I'd never heard anything like that in my life and oh I just hung on every note big noise blew in from Winnetka stole each girlie's heart and then Noise blew in from one that called. Big noise blew right out again. Girls were sighing, their boyfriends crying, their hearts were breaking when. Big Noise from Winnetka was indeed one of Crosby's greatest hits. This classic piece was immortalized on film in this Columbia feature entitled Reveille with Beverly. The outrageous stylings of its creators, Bob Haggart and Ray Baduke, have been captured here for the ages. Just now, to see if I can get you to chuckle again and also to listen to some great music, Bob Havens, our trombone player, does things on Tiger Rag like you've never heard nor seen before. Another fugitive from Lawrence Welk, Bob Havens. Thank you. 
1942, the Crosby Band had played in films for Columbia, Paramount, Republic, and MGM. And here's a snappy rendition of Sugarfoot Stomp, done of all places in a Pullman car. about a cowboy when you think of yippee Think of English crumpets when you think of having tears. Think of silver moonlight and how lovely it can be. But when you think of loving, baby, think In presenting Lily Mars for MGM, Bob is joined here by the Wild Sisters. Think you'd like to ski. Think of cute Willie Bros when you think you'd like a spree. Think about the movies for a set of dishes free. But when you think of loving, baby, think of me. In a scene from the same film, Judy Garland joins Bob and the orchestra in a lovely ballad. I can sing a little. Well, come on, sister. You're on. All right. You can go right on.
me silly moon crazy quilt of the sky are you real or a dream that got caught in my eye when i look at you i'm looking at rainbows stars come tumbling down from above I think now we should feature our pianist, Mr. Ray Sherman. We have an arrangement number three in the books. This was written by Joe Sullivan, who used to be in the original Bob Crosby band. There was a wonderful story about it. He met a girl and fell in love with her in Little Rock, Arkansas. And the folks didn't think that he was quite the right sort of person for her. So they had to elope. And he got the ladder and the whole thing, and they eloped, and they left Little Rock, and he calls this number the Little Rock Getaway. <laughs> <laughs> 